The World Bank French, Banque Mondiale, is an international financial institution that provides interest-free loans and grants to the governments of poorer countries for the purpose of pursuing capital projects. It comprises two institutions, the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development and the International Development Association The World Bank is a component of the World Bank Group. The World Bank's most recent stated goal is the reduction of poverty. As of November 2018, the largest recipients of World Bank loans were India $859 million in 2018 and China $370 million in 2018, through loans from IBRD. <laughs> World Bank Group The World Bank Group is an extended family of five international organizations, and the parent organization of the World Bank, the collective name given to the first two listed organizations, the IBRD and the EDA International Bank for Reconstruction and Development International Development Association International Finance Corporation Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency International Center for Settlement of Investment Disputes ICSID Topic History The World Bank was created at the 1944 Bretton Woods Conference along with the International Monetary Fund IMF The president of the World Bank is traditionally an American the World Bank and the IMF are both based in Washington, D.C., and work closely with each other. Although many countries were represented at the Bretton Woods Conference, the United States and United Kingdom were the most powerful in attendance and dominated the negotiations. The intention behind the founding of the World Bank was to provide temporary loans to low-income countries which were unable to obtain loans commercially. The bank may also make loans and demand policy reforms from recipients. Topic 1944 to 1974. Before 1974, the reconstruction and development loans provided by the World Bank were relatively small. The bank staff were aware of the need to instill confidence in the bank. Fiscal conservatism ruled, and loan applications had to meet strict criteria. The first country to receive a World Bank loan was France. The bank's president at the time, John McCloy, chose France over two other applicants, Poland and Chile. The loan was for $250 million, half the amount requested, and it came with strict conditions. France had to agree to produce a balanced budget and give priority of debt repayment to the World Bank over other governments. World Bank staff closely monitored the use of the funds to ensure that the French government met the conditions. In addition, before the loan was approved, the United States State Department told the French government that its members associated with the Communist Party would first have to be removed. The French government complied and removed the Communist coalition government, the so called tripartite. Within hours, the loan to France was approved. When the Marshall Plan went into effect in 1947, many European countries began receiving aid from other sources. Faced with this competition, the World Bank shifted its focus to non European countries. Until 1968, its loans were earmarked for the construction of infrastructure works, such as seaports, highway systems, and power plants, that would generate enough income to enable a borrower country to repay the loan. In 1960, the International Development Association was formed as opposed to a UN fund named SUNFED, providing soft loans to developing countries. Topic 1974 to 1980. From 1974 to 1980, the bank concentrated on meeting the basic needs of people in the developing world. The size and number of loans to borrowers was greatly increased as loan targets expanded from infrastructure into social services and other sectors. These changes can be attributed to Robert McNamara, who was appointed to the presidency in 1968 by Lyndon B. Johnson. 
McNamara implored bank treasurer Eugene Rotberg to seek out new sources of capital outside of the northern banks that had been the primary sources of funding. Rotberg used the global bond market to increase the capital available to the bank. One consequence of the period of poverty alleviation lending was the rapid rise of third world debt. From 1976 to 1980 developing world debt rose at an average annual rate of 20%. In 1980 the World Bank Administrative Tribunal was established to decide on disputes between the World Bank Group and its staff where allegation of non-observance of contracts of employment or terms of appointment had not been honored. Topic 1980 to 1989 In 1980 McNamara was succeeded by U.S. President Jimmy Carter's nominee, Alden W. Clausen. Clausen replaced many members of McNamara's staff and crafted a different mission emphasis. His 1982 decision to replace the bank's chief economist, Hollis B. Chenery, with Ann Kruger was an example of this new focus. Kruger was known for her criticism of development funding and for describing Third World governments as rent seeking states. During the 1980s the bank emphasized lending to service third world debt, and structural adjustment policies designed to streamline the economies of developing nations. UNICEF reported in the late 1980s that the structural adjustment programs of the World Bank had been responsible for "...reduced health, nutritional and educational levels for tens of millions of children in Asia, Latin America, and Africa." topic 1989 present Beginning in 1989, in response to harsh criticism from many groups, the bank began including environmental groups and NGOs in its loans to mitigate the past effects of its development policies that had prompted the criticism. It also formed an implementing agency in accordance with the Montreal Protocols to stop ozone depletion damage to the Earth's atmosphere by phasing out the use of 95% of ozone depleting chemicals with a target date of 2015. Since then, in accordance with its so-called six strategic themes, the bank has put various additional policies into effect to preserve the environment while promoting development. For example, in 1991 the bank announced that to protect against deforestation, especially in the Amazon, it would not finance any commercial logging or infrastructure projects that harm the environment. In order to promote global public goods, the World Bank tries to control communicable disease such as malaria, delivering vaccines to several parts of the world and joining combat forces. In 2000 the bank announced a war on AIDS. And in 2011, the bank joined the Stop Tuberculosis Partnership. Traditionally, based on a tacit understanding between the United States and Europe, the president of the World Bank has always been selected from candidates nominated by the United States. In 2012, for the first time, two non U.S. citizens were nominated. On 23 March 2012, U.S. President Barack Obama announced that the United States would nominate Jim Yong Kim as the next president of the bank. Jim Yong Kim was elected on 27 April 2012 and re-elected for a second five-year term in 2017. He announced that he will resign effective 1 February 2019. He was replaced on an interim basis by World Bank CEO Kristalina Georgieva. Criteria <coughs> 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 Various developments had brought the Millennium Development Goals targets for 2015 within reach in some cases. For the goals to be realized, six criteria must be met – stronger and more inclusive growth in Africa and fragile states, more effort in health and education, integration of the development and environment agendas, more as well as better aid, movement on trade negotiations, and stronger and more focused support from multilateral institutions like the World Bank. Eradicate extreme poverty and hunger. From 1990 through 2004, the proportion of people living in extreme poverty fell from almost a third to less than a fifth. Although results vary widely within regions and countries, the trend indicates that the world as a whole can meet the goal of halving the percentage of people living in poverty. 
Africa's poverty, however, is expected to rise, and most of the 36 countries where 90% of the world's undernourished children live are in Africa. Less than a quarter of countries are on track for achieving the goal of halving undernutrition. Achieve universal primary education. The percentage of children in school in developing countries increased from 80% in 1991 to 88% in 2005. Still, about 72 million children of primary school age, 57% of them girls, were not being educated as of 2005. Promote gender equality. The tide is turning slowly for women in the labor market, yet far more women than men worldwide, more than 60%, are contributing but unpaid family workers. The World Bank Group Gender Action Plan was created to advance women's economic empowerment and promote shared growth. Reduce child mortality. There is some improvement in survival rates globally. Accelerated improvements are needed most urgently in South Asia and Sub Saharan Africa. An estimated 10 million plus children under 5 died in 2005, most of their deaths were from preventable causes. Improve maternal health – Almost all of the half million women who die during pregnancy or childbirth every year live in sub-Saharan Africa and Asia. There are numerous causes of maternal death that require a variety of health care interventions to be made widely accessible. Combat HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases. Annual numbers of new HIV infections and AIDS deaths have fallen, but the number of people living with HIV continues to grow. In the eight worst hit Southern African countries, prevalence is above 15%. Treatment has increased globally, but still meets only 30% of needs with wide variations across countries. AIDS remains the leading cause of death in sub-Saharan Africa 1.6 million deaths in 2007. There are 300 to 500 million cases of malaria each year, leading to more than 1 million deaths. Nearly all the cases and more than 95% of the deaths occur in sub-Saharan Africa. Ensure environmental sustainability. Deforestation remains a critical problem, particularly in regions of biological diversity, which continues to decline. Greenhouse gas emissions are increasing faster than energy technology advancement. Develop a global partnership for development. Donor countries have renewed their commitment. Donors have to fulfill their pledges to match the current rate of core program development. Emphasis is being placed on the bank group's collaboration with multilateral and local partners to quicken progress toward the Moundings realization, to make sure that World Bank financed operations do not compromise these goals but instead add to their realization. Environmental, social, and legal safeguards were defined. However, these safeguards have not been implemented entirely yet. At the World Bank's annual meeting in Tokyo 2012 a review of these safeguards has been initiated, which was welcomed by several civil society organizations. <laughs> <laughs> Leadership The president of the bank is the president of the entire World Bank Group. The President is responsible for chairing the meetings of the boards of directors and for overall management of the bank. Traditionally, the President of the bank has always been a U.S. citizen nominated by the United States, the largest shareholder in the bank the managing director of the International Monetary Fund having always been a European. The nominee is subject to confirmation by the board of executive directors, to serve for a five-year, renewable term. While most World Bank presidents have had banking experience, some have not. The vice presidents of the bank are its principal managers, in charge of regions, sectors, networks, and functions. There are two executive vice presidents, three senior vice presidents, and 24 vice presidents. The boards of directors consist of the World Bank Group president and 25 executive directors. The president is the presiding officer, and ordinarily has no vote except a deciding vote in case of an equal division. The executive directors as individuals cannot exercise any power nor commit or represent the bank unless specifically authorized by the boards to do so. With the term beginning 1 November 2010, the number of executive directors increased by 1, to 25. Presidents Topic Chief Economists
Topic: Members. The International Bank for Reconstruction and Development IBRD has 189 member countries, while the International Development Association IDA has 173 members. Each member state of IBRD should also be a member of the International Monetary Fund IMF and only members of IBRD are allowed to join other institutions within the bank such as IDA. Topic Voting power In 2010 voting powers at the World Bank were revised to increase the voice of developing countries, notably China. The countries with most voting power are now the United States Japan China Germany the United Kingdom France India Russia Saudi Arabia and Italy under the changes, known as voice reform, phase two, countries other than China that saw significant gains included South Korea, Turkey, Mexico, Singapore, Greece, Brazil, India, and Spain. Most developed countries' voting power was reduced, along with a few developing countries such as Nigeria. The voting powers of the United States, Russia, and Saudi Arabia were unchanged. The changes were brought about with the goal of making voting more universal in regards to standards, rule based with objective indicators, and transparent among other things. Now, developing countries have an increased voice in the pool model, backed especially by Europe. Additionally, voting power is based on economic size in addition to International Development Association contributions. Topic. List of 20 largest countries by voting power in each World Bank institution The following table shows the subscriptions of the top 20 member countries of the World Bank by voting power in the following World Bank institutions as of December 2014 or March 2015, the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development the International Finance Corporation the International Development Association and the Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency Member countries are allocated votes at the time of membership and subsequently for additional subscriptions to capital one vote for each share of capital stock held by the member. <laughs> Poverty reduction strategies For the poorest developing countries in the world, the bank's assistance plans are based on poverty reduction strategies, by combining a cross-section of local groups with an extensive analysis of the country's financial and economic situation the World Bank develops a strategy pertaining uniquely to the country in question. The government then identifies the country's priorities and targets for the reduction of poverty, and the World Bank aligns its aid efforts correspondingly. 45 countries pledged $25.1 billion in aid for the world's poorest countries. Aid that goes to the World Bank International Development Association, which distributes the loans to 80 poorer countries. While wealthier nations sometimes fund their own aid projects, including those for diseases, and although EDA is the recipient of criticism, Robert B. Zolik, the former president of the World Bank, said when the loans were announced on 15 December 2007, that EDA money, "...is the core funding that the poorest developing countries rely on." World Bank organizes Development Marketplace Awards, a competitive grant program that surfaces and funds innovative, development projects with high potential for development impact that are scalable and or replicable. The grant beneficiaries are social enterprises with projects that aim to deliver a range of social and public services to the most underserved low-income groups. Global partnerships and initiatives 
The World Bank has been assigned temporary management responsibility of the Clean Technology Fund CTF, focused on making renewable energy cost competitive with coal-fired power as quickly as possible, but this may not continue after UN's Copenhagen Climate Change Conference in December 2009, because of the bank's continued investment in coal-fired power plants. In December 2017, Kim announced the World Bank would no longer finance fossil fuel development. Together with the World Health Organization, the World Bank administers the International Health Partnership IHP+. IHP+ is a group of partners committed to improving the health of citizens in developing countries. Partners work together to put international principles for aid effectiveness and development cooperation into practice in the health sector. IHP Plus mobilizes national governments, development agencies, civil society and others to support a single, country-led national health strategy in a well-coordinated way. Climate change World Bank President Jim Yong Kim said in 2012 that a four degree warmer world can, and must be, avoided, we need to hold warming below two degrees. Lack of action on climate change threatens to make the world our children inherit a completely different world than we are living in today. Climate change is one of the single biggest challenges facing development, and we need to assume the moral responsibility to take action on behalf of future generations, especially the poorest. A World Bank report into climate change in 2012 noted that p. XIII, even with the current mitigation commitments and pledges fully implemented, there is roughly a 20% likelihood of exceeding 4 degrees Celsius by 2100. This is despite the fact that the global community has committed itself to holding warming below 2 degrees Celsius to prevent dangerous climate change. Furthermore, a series of recent extreme events worldwide highlight the vulnerability of all countries. No nation will be immune to the impacts of climate change. The World Bank doubled its aid for climate change adaptation from $2.3 billion, $1.47 billion in 2011 to $4.6 billion in 2012. The planet is now 0.8 degrees Celsius warmer than in pre-industrial times. It says that 2 degrees Celsius warming will be reached in 20 to 30 years. In December 2017, Kim announced the World Bank would no longer finance fossil fuel development. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Food security. Global Food Security Program, launched in April 2010, six countries alongside the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation have pledged $925 million for food security. To date, the program has helped eight countries, promoting agriculture, research, trade in agriculture, etc. Launched Global Food Crisis Response Program, given grants to approximately 40 nations for seeds, etc. for improving productivity. In process of increasing its yearly spending for agriculture to $6–8 billion from earlier $4 billion. Runs several nutrition program across the world, e.g., vitamin A doses for children, school meals, etc. Training wings Global Operations Knowledge Management Unit The World Bank Institute WBI was a «global connector of knowledge, learning and innovation for poverty reduction». It aimed to inspire change agents and prepare them with essential tools that can help achieve development results. WBI had four major strategies to approach development problems, innovation for development, knowledge exchange, leadership and coalition building, and structured learning. World Bank Institute was formerly known as Economic Development Institute established on of March 1955 with the support of the Rockefeller and Ford Foundations. The purpose of the institute was to serve as provide an open place where senior officials from developing countries could discuss development policies and programs. 
Over the years, EDI grew significantly and in 2000, the institute was renamed as the World Bank Institute. Sanjay Pradhan is the past vice president of the World Bank Institute. As of 2019, the World Bank Institute functions have been mostly encapsulated by a new unit, Global Operations Knowledge Management Unit, which is now responsible for knowledge management and learning across the bank. Topic: <laughs> Global Development Learning Network. The Global Development Learning Network (GDLN) is a partnership of over 120 learning centers (GDLN affiliates) in nearly 80 countries around the world. GDLN affiliates collaborate in holding events that connect people across countries and regions for learning and dialogue on development issues. GDLN clients are typically NGOs, government, private sector and development agencies who find that they work better together on subregional, regional or global development issues using the facilities and tools offered by GDLN affiliates. Clients also benefit from the ability of affiliates to help them choose and apply these tools effectively, and to tap development practitioners and experts worldwide. GDLN affiliates facilitate around 1,000 videoconference-based activities a year on behalf of their clients, reaching some 90,000 people worldwide. Most of these activities bring together participants in two or more countries over a series of sessions. A majority of GDLN activities are organized by small government agencies and NGOs. GDLN Asia Pacific The GDLN in the East Asia and Pacific region has experienced rapid growth and distance learning centers now operate, or are planned in 20 countries, Australia, Mongolia, Cambodia, China, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Sri Lanka, Japan, Papua New Guinea, South Korea, Thailand, Laos, Timor-Leste, Fiji, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, India, Nepal and New Zealand. With over 180 distance learning centers, it is the largest development learning network in the Asia and Pacific region. The Secretariat Office of GDLN Asia Pacific is located in the Center of Academic Resources of Chulalongkorn University, Bangkok, Thailand. GDLN Asia Pacific was launched at the GDLN's East Asia and Pacific Regional Meeting held in Bangkok from 22 to 24 May 2006. Its vision is to become, "...the premier network exchanging ideas, experience and know-how across the Asia-Pacific region." GDLN Asia-Pacific is a separate entity to the World Bank. It has endorsed its own charter and business plan and, in accordance with the charter, a GDLN Asia-Pacific Governing Committee has been appointed. The committee comprises China two, Australia one, Thailand one, the World Bank one, and finally, a nominee of the Government of Japan one. The organization is currently hosted by Chulalongkorn University in Bangkok, Thailand, founding member of the GDLN Asia-Pacific. The governing committee has determined that the most appropriate legal status for the GDLN app in Thailand is a «foundation». The World Bank is currently engaging a solicitor in Thailand to process all documentation in order to obtain this legal status. GDLN Asia Pacific is built on the principle of shared resources among partners engaged in a common task, and this is visible in the organizational structures that exist, as the network evolves. Physical space for its headquarters is provided by the host of the GDLN Center in Thailand, Chulalongkorn University. Technical expertise and some infrastructure is provided by the Tokyo Development Learning Center (TDLC). Fiduciary services are provided by Australian National University (ANU) until the GDLN Asia Pacific is established as a legal entity. Tin Thailand (ANU) has offered to assist the governing committee by providing a means of managing the inflow and outflow of funds and of reporting on them. This admittedly results in some complexity in contracting arrangements, which need to be worked out on a case-by-case -case basis and depends to some extent on the legal requirements of the countries involved. <laughs> JUSTPAL network 
A Justice Sector Peer Assisted Learning network was launched in April 2011 by the Poverty Reduction and Economic Management Department of the World Bank's Europe and Central Asia region. The JUSTPAL objective is to provide an online and offline platform for justice professionals to exchange knowledge, good practices and peer-driven improvements to justice systems and thereby support countries to improve their justice sector performance, quality of justice and service delivery to citizens and businesses. The JUSTPAL network includes representatives of judiciaries, ministries of justice, prosecutors, anti-corruption agencies and other justice-related entities from across the globe. The network currently has active members from more than 50 countries. To facilitate fruitful exchange of reform experiences and sharing of applicable good practices, the JUSTPAL network has organized its activities under currently five communities of practice COPS, I, budgeting for the justice sector, II information systems for justice services, III justice sector physical infrastructure, IV court management and administration, and v prosecution and anti-corruption agencies. Topic: Country assistance strategies. As a guideline to the World Bank's operations in any particular country, a country assistance strategy is produced in cooperation with the local government and any interested stakeholders, and may rely on analytical work performed by the bank or other parties. Topic: Clean Air Initiative. Clean Air Initiative is a World Bank initiative to advance innovative ways to improve air quality in cities through partnerships in selected regions of the world by sharing knowledge and experiences. It includes electric vehicles. Initiatives like this help address and tackle pollution-related diseases. <laughs> United Nations Development Business Based on an agreement between the United Nations and the World Bank in 1981, development business became the official source for World Bank procurement notices, contract awards, and project approvals. In 1998, the agreement was renegotiated, and included in this agreement was a joint venture to create an electronic version of the publication via the World Wide Web. Today, Development Business is the primary publication for all major multilateral development banks, United Nations agencies, and several national governments, many of whom have made the publication of their tenders and contracts in Development Business a mandatory requirement. The World Bank or the World Bank Group is also a sitting observer in the United Nations Development Group. Topic: <laughs> Open Data Initiative The World Bank collects and processes large amounts of data and generates them on the basis of economic models. These data and models have gradually been made available to the public in a way that encourages reuse, whereas the recent publications describing them are available as open access under a Creative Commons attribution license, for which the bank received the Spark Innovator 2012 award. The World Bank also endorses the principles for digital development. Topic. Grants table The following table lists the top 15 DAC five-digit sectors to which the World Bank has committed funding, as recorded by it in its International Aid Transparency Initiative publications. The World Bank states on the IATI registry website that the amounts will cover 100% of IBRD and EDA development flows but will not cover other development flows. <inaudible> Open Knowledge Repository The World Bank hosts the Open Knowledge Repository as an official open access repository for its research outputs and knowledge products. The World Bank's repository is listed in the Registry of Research Data Repositories re3data.org Topic. Criticisms and controversy 
The World Bank has long been criticized by non-governmental organizations, such as the indigenous rights group Survival International, and academics, including its former chief economist Joseph Stiglitz, Henry Hazlett and Ludwig von Mises. Henry Hazlett argued that the World Bank along with the monetary system it was designed within would promote world inflation and a world in which international trade is state-dominated", when they were being advocated. Stiglitz argued that the so-called free market reform policies that the bank advocates are often harmful to economic development if implemented badly, too quickly, shock therapy, in the wrong sequence or in weak, uncompetitive economies. Similarly, Carmine Guerriero notices that these reforms have introduced in developing countries regulatory institutions typical of the common law legal tradition because allegedly more efficient according to the legal origins theory. The latter however has been fiercely criticized since it does not take into account that the legal institutions transplanted during the European colonization have been then reformed. This issue makes the legal origins theory's inference unreliable and the World Bank reforms detrimental. One of the most common criticisms of the World Bank has been the way in which it is governed. While the World Bank represents 188 countries, it is run by a small number of economically powerful countries. These countries which also provide most of the institution's funding choose the leadership and senior management of the World Bank and their interests dominate the bank. Titus Alexander argues that the unequal voting power of Western countries and the World Bank's role in developing countries makes it similar to the South African Development Bank under apartheid, and therefore a pillar of global apartheid. In the 1990s, the World Bank and the IMF forged the Washington Consensus, policies that included deregulation and liberalization of markets, privatization, and the downscaling of government. Though the Washington Consensus was conceived as a policy that would best promote development, it was criticized for ignoring equity, employment and how reforms like privatization were carried out. Joseph Stiglitz argued that the Washington Consensus placed too much emphasis on the growth of GDP, and not enough on the permanence of growth or on whether growth contributed to better living standards. The United States Senate Committee on Foreign Relations report criticized the World Bank and other international financial institutions for focusing too much on issuing loans rather than on achieving concrete development results within a finite period of time, and called on the institution to strengthen anti-corruption efforts." James Ferguson has argued that the main effect of many development projects carried out by the World Bank and similar organizations is not the alleviation of poverty. Instead the projects often serve to expand the exercise of bureaucratic state power. Through his case studies of development projects in Thaba T. Sika he shows that the World Bank's characterization of the economic conditions in Lesotho was flawed, and the bank ignored the political and cultural character of the state in crafting their projects. As a result, the projects failed to help the poor, but succeeded in expanding the government bureaucracy. Criticism of the World Bank and other organizations often takes the form of protesting, such as the World Bank Oslo 2002 protests, the 2007 October Rebellion, and the 1999 Battle of Seattle. Such demonstrations have occurred all over the world, even among the Brazilian Kayapo people. Another source of criticism has been the tradition of having an American head the bank, implemented because the United States provides the majority of World Bank funding. When economists from the World Bank visit poor countries to dispense cash and advice, observed The Economist in 2012, they routinely tell governments to reject cronyism and fill each important job with the best candidate available. It is good advice. The World Bank should take it. Jim Yong Kim, a Korean-American, is the most recently appointed president of the World Bank. Structural adjustment The effect of structural adjustment policies on poor countries has been one of the most significant criticisms of the World Bank. The 1979 energy crisis plunged many countries into economic crisis. The World Bank responded with structural adjustment loans, which distributed aid to struggling countries while enforcing policy changes in order to reduce inflation and fiscal imbalance. 
Some of these policies included encouraging production, investment and labor-intensive manufacturing, changing real exchange rates and altering the distribution of government resources. Structural adjustment policies were most effective in countries with an institutional framework that allowed these policies to be implemented easily. For some countries, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, economic growth regressed and inflation worsened. The alleviation of poverty was not a goal of structural adjustment loans, and the circumstances of the poor often worsened, due to a reduction in social spending and an increase in the price of food. As subsidies were lifted, by the late 1980s, international organizations began to admit that structural adjustment policies were worsening life for the world's poor. The World Bank changed structural adjustment loans, allowing for social spending to be maintained, and encouraging a slower change to policies such as transfer of subsidies and price rises. In 1999, the World Bank and the IMF introduced the Poverty Reduction Strategy Paper approach to replace structural adjustment loans. The Poverty Reduction Strategy Paper approach has been interpreted as an extension of structural adjustment policies as it continues to reinforce and legitimize global inequities. Neither approach has addressed the inherent flaws within the global economy that contribute to economic and social inequities within developing countries. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Fairness of assistance conditions. Some critics, most prominently the author Naomi Klein, are of the opinion that the World Bank Group's loans and aid have unfair conditions attached to them that reflect the interests, financial power and political doctrines notably the Washington Consensus of the bank and, by extension, the countries that are most influential within it. Among other allegations, Klein says the group's credibility was damaged when it forced school fees on students in Ghana in exchange for a loan, when it demanded that Tanzania privatize its water system, when it made telecom privatization a condition of aid for Hurricane Mitch, when it demanded labor flexibility in Sri Lanka in the aftermath of the Asian tsunami, when it pushed for eliminating food subsidies in post-invasion Iraq. Sovereign immunity The World Bank requires sovereign immunity from countries it deals with. Sovereign immunity waives a holder from all legal liability for their actions. It is proposed that this immunity from responsibility is a "...shield which the World Bank wants to resort to, for escaping accountability and security by the people." As the United States has veto power, it can prevent the World Bank from taking action against its interests. PricewaterhouseCoopers World Bank favored PricewaterhouseCoopers as a consultant in a bid for privatizing the water distribution in Delhi, India. See also BRICS Development Bank Clean Energy for Development Investment Framework Democracy Ranking Energy Sector Management Assistance Program Russia World Bank Relations All pages with titles containing World Bank <laughs>